Hello, I am Dr. B. Haigrivarao, a senior cardiologist and director of uh, the division of pacing and electrophysiology at Kim's Hospital Hyderabad. Today, I am going to talk briefly on a very important cardiac emergency, sudden cardiac arrest. Of all the cardiac emergencies, the most catastrophic and the most dangerous is sudden cardiac arrest. Briefly, many of us would have seen when somebody is sitting amongst us, talking to us, suddenly falls down, loses consciousness, and within a minute, few minutes loses his life. This is typically a case of sudden cardiac arrest, which is defined as any patient who is not having any major problem to expect death suddenly falls down and loses his life. Now, as the scenario suggests, what is most important for this clinical syndrome is to prevent the occurrence of sudden cardiac arrest because sudden cardiac arrest leads to sudden death and that is terminal. If you go back and see, in India, the data is sparse. 2000, around 2012, we undertook a study and published in the International Journal of Cardiology. And we found that of all deaths, 10% of all these deaths are sudden cardiac deaths. So that is a huge burden. And uh, we found that this percentage is approximately similar in, to that in the Western countries, but number wise it is much more. The common causes of sudden cardiac arrest are unknown underlying coronary artery disease. Patients who have diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, who are addicted to smoking and who lead a stressful life, these are all the coronary risk factors. These patients who have never got themselves evaluated may suddenly have a heart attack and a sudden cardiac arrest and may die suddenly. So unevaluated or undiagnosed blockages in the coronary arteries are the most common cause of sudden death in our country. The second one would be those patients who have had a heart attack in the past and who have suffered a damage to their heart muscle which is termed technically as a left ventricular dysfunction or LV dysfunction which is diagnosed by doing an echocardiogram. So these patients with this kind of dysfunction are prone for sudden cardiac arrest. So the lower the number on the echocardiogram of LV function, the higher the risk. A normal function is about 60 to 65 percent. So somebody who has a 30 to 35 percent ejection fraction on the echocardiogram is at a risk of sudden death. Now these patients may have had heart attack in the many years back, five years or 10 years back and may have already undergone angioplasty or bypass surgery, but still as long as their heart muscle is weak, they are at risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Third is patients who have weak muscle of the heart for any other reason apart from heart attacks. That could be for no reason. So these patients are also at risk of heart, uh, sudden cardiac arrest. Lastly, some of the sudden cardiac arrests occur in very young people, in children and young age, 20 years or 25 years of age. Now these patients are the ones who have an inherited disorders, so genetic disorders which are prone for sudden cardiac arrest and sudden death. Some of the names are like a Brugada syndrome or a long QT syndrome. So these are typically diagnosed by having a family history of people dying suddenly at young ages or somebody can diagnose by their ECGs which are very typical in those patients. So all these uh, different scenarios and different age groups which I have said all can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. The presentation in all can be number one as a warning signal. So somebody can lose consciousness for a few seconds or if one minute or so and then can regain consciousness. This kind of patients with underlying problems like I uh, described a few minutes ago like a heart attack or a weak muscle of the heart, they should take it very seriously. That means they are getting a warning signal. The next time it may not be warning signal, it may be death directly. So it is important for patients who have had a heart attack or with a weak heart, if they lose consciousness even for a few seconds or a few minutes to get themselves evaluated by an electrophysiologist. And secondly, they, those patients, some of them will have a brief 
thumping of the chest or palpitations or the heart, rate, heart racing, these patients again should get themselves evaluated because these warning signals can be evaluated at timely intervention can prevent sudden death. The time of the type of investigations that we do varies depending on different patients. They could start with an angiogram, echo, echocardiogram, and they should they can go on to electrophysiological studies. Eventually, an electrophysiologist will stratify a patient as to a patient has high risk for sudden death or a low risk for sudden death. So, those at a high risk of sudden death, the therapy is to prevent the sudden deaths. The therapy these days is by means of a device which is called as an implantable cardioverter defibrillator. In short, it is called as an ICD. The patients who are at a high risk of sudden death, these patients are implanted by this device called ICD by an electrophysiologist. What an ICD does is what a doctor does in the intensive care unit. That is, when they have dangerous rhythms which can lead to sudden cardiac arrest, the ICD automatically detects it and delivers a shock, just like the defibrillator shock which the ICCU doctors give in the ICCU. Now, the underlying causes of sudden cardiac arrest are dangerous rhythms like ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. The ICD gives a shock and terminates these dangerous rhythms into normal rhythm and saves life. Once an ICD is implanted in the body, the patient can go anywhere, he can be flying, he can be talking, he can be walking or he can be playing games, but at any time he is safe because this can deliver a shock and save his life. Now these devices are not very huge, they weigh around 200 grams or 300 grams and they are typically implanted under the muzzle, uh, over the muzzle under the skin by a procedure which is done under local anesthesia. The procedure is fairly simple, takes about one, and, one to one and a half hours in time and the hospital stay is only two days and the patient is completely conscious while doing this procedure as it is done under local anesthesia and once it is done within 12 hours to 16 hours after the procedure patient can get up and stand up and walk. He needs an antibiotics for a couple of days and he walks home. The follow up is important because this device, an ICD is basically a complex computer which is implanted in the body and uh, it has to be programmed by a knowledgeable person and uh, checked repeatedly once in three months or so. In the present point in time, we also have remote monitoring devices. That means an ICD can be checked miles away, hundreds of miles away by your doctor, by a telemet by using the Bluetooth and by the satellite links which are becoming popular these days. There are various types of ICD. Typically, once an ICD is put in, a patient can do almost all the activities normally. Cell phones can be used and can be used on the opposite ear. Typically, they are implanted on the left side one can use cell phones on the right side. The only uh, the objection is to go through a metal detectors and uh, MRI examination is generally not uh, contraindicated, is not advised in these patients. But these days the technology has improved. MRI compatible ICDs have come in. So there are ICDs which can be implanted and patient can still go for MRI. So one important point one must realize, patient who has a risk of sudden death, although they get ICDs, now, that is not the end of the story because they continue to take medications. They need to take medications because the heart is still weak and for that they need to take medications. And to prevent these dangerous rhythms, they need to take medications continuously because ICDs can only shock a rhythm. They don't prevent a rhythm from occurring. And for that they need to take medications continuously and to be on regular follow-up. Thank you very much.